warning, some viewers may find this content disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. dares awaken me from my slumber. Harley Owens, you have returned. I appreciate the loyalty. This must mean it is once again time for Midnight Lycanthropy here on Star Fox Radio. Yet, before we do head out, ah, need to replenish my lost power sources. Thank you very much for allowing me to replenish my abilities. I do love sleeping for long periods of time here in the Fox Den, yet unfortunately I do tend to wither away. Without further ado, it is now time for Harley Owens and I to take a walk into the darkness. Creatures of the night, welcome back to another episode of Midnight Lycanthropy here in the Fox Den, yes, on Star Fox Radio. Tonight, we have Harley Owens, yes, from Tennessee, from Bigfoot Reports and Data. He's going to dive into some dogman topics with us and actually educate us on some theories he has. How are you doing tonight, Harley? I am doing extremely well, and I'm glad to be here and discuss my theories with you, my friend. Yeah, no, this is excellent. Definitely been pretty busy on both aspects, so it's good to be able to sit down and chat here for a few and try to dive into the Dogman topic. Oh, yeah, absolutely. What are your thoughts? Basically, you know, I know you're down in the Tennessee area, and obviously everyone tries to go to the weakest flex in the Dogman phenomenon, the LBL massacre. And, you know, honestly, in my opinion, geez, the LBL has kind of turned into like a gathering for a comic con, it seems like. Yet you are pretty active down in the area outside of that infamous spot. So if you want to try to dive into basically some of your opinions about what's occurring down there and some of your philosophies, let's dive into this. Well, um, you know, I went to the LBL back in February or March and the energy there, it was it was weird. You know, I never came across any dog man or nothing like that. I don't know where all that activity happens at there, but I will say for certain here in East Tennessee, it's probably about four hours from the LBL. The dog man and the Bigfoot here seem to have a symbiotic relationship of sorts. There's no signs of, you know, conflict between these creatures. They're in the same areas and you know, I, I don't know if the Bigfoot use them for hunting dogs, and I'm still I'm working on this theory, other theory right now that they use the dog man to guard their young. Very intriguing. Would you like to elaborate on that a tad? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so on January 7th, some friends of mine from North Carolina came up uh and we were out in the area and, you know, I, I, this was, I still hadn't run into a dog man at that time, but I had found, I've got them on film. I've got pictures of them. And, uh, 
we were walking down the trail and we came across some tracks and we we were going to try and photograph them but the weather it wasn't cooperating it was sleeting and raining and it was just mixing up back and forth and we found dogman tracks that were five inches across and they there was a five foot stride in between each track but the weird the weirdest thing was probably 15 or 20 yards off the trail from where we found those tracks um there was an area that literally looked like what we could make out was you know there were smaller bigfoot and they were in there playing around and i think that the the bigfoot are using the dog man to either guard their young or using them as watchers to let them know if people are coming in or what i mean i'm still i'm still working on a bunch a bunch of theories on this but i mean it's the only logical thing that makes sense no that's definitely pretty intriguing right there and i would as you dive more into that over time like to definitely continue to be updated on that and there are symbolic relationships in nature with known animals that either ones that are more intellectual than others will take advantage of that i believe it's the cuckoo bird for example goes into another bird's nest while the bird's away and just dumps all the eggs out and leaves its own eggs in there and then the bird raises the eggs as if it's its own when it's not it's a completely different species of bird variant no it's definitely prevalent inside of natural animal behavior as well what's really got me about the lbl recently is i will say i have not really taken any recent type encounter documentations from the actual inside area of the lbl i've been taking documentations and encounters from the outskirts like you said in other areas in kentucky and tennessee that are pretty recent yet the lbl itself that massacre area I almost feel like that's a dead spot now, man. Let's be real, dude. This is almost pushing like, what, 30 years ago? Way that a dogman or an unknown species is just going to specifically stay in that area, which would also solidify now why there aren't really those updated reports coming out of that area. Because like I said, it's kind of like a Comic-Con campground gathering now where you have hundreds and hundreds of people. I mean, a dogman is definitely going to gear away from that in my eyes. Well, uh, you're certainly not wrong there. Uh, and, you know, and if the further that I keep looking into all this stuff, I learned that people, if they see something, they're not going to talk about it until they're ready. That's the way I was. I mean, I, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that has felt that way. And I mean, if I if I keep thinking about it more and more, these things are they're crafty they're smart i can't tell you how many times that i've walked by a dog man and i've gone back through my footage and sure enough it's right there not even 15 feet away from me frankly if it wasn't for bigfoot the the dog man would be the apex predators in the woods you know i think i think the bigfoot kind of keep the dog man in check i don't see why two apex predators would you know just fight each other off and kill each other you know when they can have a mutual respect for one another and learn to coexist of sorts and you know the more the more i keep digging into this stuff you know and i keep check, read, looking into electromagnetic fields and all this stuff and it you know i think that certain i don't know if electromagnetic fields if they have a, a higher frequency or whatnot you know because i believe these creatures can sense you know electromagnetic fields and all that stuff and they it's a rabbit hole to talk about i think that if, if maybe if the electromagnetic field gets too high you know if it can make these creatures go crazy you know because the let's the moon phases you know they they have effect on people you know and I, i'm just trying to elaborate on like if electromagnetic fields could cause something to trigger them to know to attack that's a very interesting way to tackle it and it's very intriguing and there's actual again documented cases within nature with frogs and other animals that are able to predict earthquakes and massive storms that are coming and people are able to see that they leave areas days before this all occurs which proves to you that yeah uh, wildlife and is more entwined to picking up on things like that and also to touch base on what you said about the dog man hiding and being undetectable i mean think how many times people walk past mountain lions or anything or any sort of apex predator i mean they're just sitting there watching you i've seen videos of people once the cat sits up yes you see it in the tall grass but you see the person riding his mountain bike going just by tall grass and literally 
he's so lucky that the cat decided to whip its tail for a second because you wouldn't have seen it and it would have literally just disposed of him very quickly and also as to what you were touching base on yeah most likely apex predators aren't going to potentially clash with each other and i'll give you an example so if you see wolves and grizzly bears very rarely do the wolves try to directly attack the grizzly bear what they'll do is they'll either steal the grizzly bear's kill or they're just going to sit there and follow the mother until they're able to pluck off the cubs one by one that does make sense yeah uh you know and there's a lot of debate on like for example if you got a clan of bigfoot and there's a group of dog man pack or however you want to distinguish that say for instance the bigfoot or the dog man take one of the other ones off you know they're most likely it's not going to end well for one of them unless just face it it's probably going to be the dog man that ends up ends up getting killed from the bigfoot you know but in all honesty i mean you know you, you i don't know I mean, nobody knows for certain how big the dog man actually get. And, uh, you know, it's if I'd say if you get a pretty good sized dog man and a pretty good sized Bigfoot together, you know, it's, it's a fair battle between both of them, you know, because I think that the dog men are a little bit more crafty in that department, you know. And I mean, that, let's just face it, they are two creatures that are far more superior than what we are. And it's. If they're going to play dirty, they're going to play dirty. No, that makes sense. And also, if you look at the specs, Dogman, unfortunately, if you kind of look at like the creepypastas that go along with the whole cryptid community, you're going to see dips and spikes where all of a sudden some random person just comes up. They might not have made it up there, really. They might have heard the hearsay. Yeah, all of a sudden the Sasquatch was 15 feet tall. And then you're going to notice a little trend where all of a sudden all these reports come out where they saw a 15 foot Sasquatch. Yet, if you actually look into the Native American specs, you look into the North American Dogman specs. A Dogman is around six to eight feet tall, 200, 400 pounds, nothing massive as, it's, say, like a gorilla, but a large enough entity where, yeah, it can range. Some are more lanky, some are more athletic. And then same thing with the Sasquatch. If you look at Native American lore and documentation, they range from like eight to ten feet tall give or take be like yes they're more muscular and girthy like an ape slash human type hybrid the fact that people it's just i would almost like to say amusing because you can see those trends where it comes in like someone actually tried to call me the other day and was telling me about how they had seen a pack of dog men taking on a group of like 15 foot sasquatch and i was listening yet immediately i kind of dox that as not credible in my eyes because like i said when i look back through all my stuff anything that has been documented or verified not one of those cases consists of a 15 foot sasquatch well those are very rare and few between you know i haven't come across a bigfoot that big here uh you know i definitely I feel like the bigger Bigfoot, you know, are going to be up north in like Canada and Alaska. Uh, I mean, because just let's face it, the food's bigger. You know, you've got moose and you've got the big brown bears and all that stuff. I mean, the farther north you go, the bigger the prey items are going to be. Um, and, you know, I mean, who's to say that the dog men don't get bigger up in that area? Um, and, you know, I, like it just it's just the basis on where they're at. Uh, I think here in the Smoky Mountains, I think the range of a Bigfoot are easily in the eight to 10 foot range. Maybe a few are bigger, but uh, like I said, uh, the, the dog man that I saw, it was a little over eight feet tall. So it, it was big, it was very big. No, for sure. And that's definitely, as you said, something that always does need to be looked at. And I try to always approach things subjectively and objectively. And one thing I have learned, unfortunately, is when fear, though, does come into humans, sometimes our specs can potentially be off. And meaning there's been times where people thought they saw an unknown aquatic creature and they said it was like 20 feet long yet there wasn't really anything directly in there to give it a size comparison so when they did bring it to the specialized people that were able to dissect that they were like no way that's not 20 feet that's probably like 10 feet or so so it just kind of gives you a consensus sometimes of how our specs can be off and for example a gentleman a while ago shot a massive hog that ended up being a wild hog down in Texas, but he thought it weighed around 700 pounds because of the scale was topping off. But the people that actually looked at the skeletal frame, so there's no way that that creature was 700 pounds, yet the guy that shot it swears it was. Sometimes, like I said, we're not the best at articulating exact specs in the heat of the moment, I guess. Right, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what I did after I had my dog net encounter. I went back and I, I got the measurements. You know, this thing was 
a little over eight feet tall um and it had almost four foot across at the shoulders and you know the stride that this thing took in three steps it was 28 feet and that's an eight and a half foot stride so these dog man creatures they can move i'm telling y'all it, it it's it's mind-blowing no that's definitely super intriguing as well and, and actually we have an environmentalist that just joined on with us and on monday i'm diving into this topic with her in regards of the potential ancestors of dogman when you have the different versions when people see like the baboon or the hyena type ones there's all analytical historical references to all that you have the dinopithecus which was a massive baboon type humanoid creature that could easily came up on the land bridges while other animals did you have north american european and cave hyenas that again most likely came up across the land bridges when Africa was connected with the other continents, you have the Amphicino Day, which was not a bear or a wolf. It was a tweener, but also by its skeletal structure, it was definitely able to move bipedally and quadrupedally. Now, when you look at all the dogman reports and the variations, that's what I try to explain to people when they're like, well, people are using the term dogman and there has been canine DNA found. And I am like, yes, you are correct, which also, though, describes the variations, meaning just because someone is using the term dogman doesn't mean it has to be canine DNA. So if someone potentially saw a relative or ancestor of the Dinopithecus that was dwelling in caves, it does look like a baboon werewolf. So they're going to use the term baboon dogman. Yeah, if you were able to get your hands on that and take the DNA, most likely it's not going to have, no, there is no most likely. It's not going to have canine DNA in it. Same thing with hyenas. People don't realize hyenas are actually not related to dogs really or cats. But if there was one that needed to be picked, it's closely related to felines over canines. Correct me if I'm wrong here. Uh, there's, I've seen something the other day. Um, some people are claiming that some of these dogman cases are uh, from Megatherium or like the giant sloths and stuff like that. Can you correct me on that if I'm wrong? Again, I would, I'm going to actually have to dive into that as well. But yes, that again could fall into some of the actual sightings as to where the variations are going to differentiate. Just recently, Miller Wilson, he's an animal specialist. He's unbelievable. But recently he just found Tasmanian tiger tracks, man, proving that obviously somewhere out in Tasmania, they are still existing. People need to step back and potentially realize that not all species that we thought have gone extinct actually are, just like that fish that was caught a few years ago that was believed to have been extinct for thousands of years. Yeah, yeah, you're you're very, very right on that. I will elaborate on this a little bit. You know, who's to say that, you know, the, the hasn't manipulated a one of these creatures up in a lab you know or and set a bunch of them loose so. i will definitely say and agree with you that around the point in time of the stalin era and hitler and the animal type experimentations yes one thousand percent there has definitely been that type of involvement now i mean just recently unfortunately a bunch of bozo scientists that were experimenting on mice ended up doing something where the mice grew feet out of their genitals like so yes it's very apparent and obvious that humans are trying to what's the term play god in that type of regards yet now when we go back to like the sinocephali time though in 290 ec i mean these were described as bipedal human-like dog wolf creatures that wore clothing such as you and i but lived up deep within the mountains when i look back at those ones i don't think there is human splicing at that point in time i right. think like i yeah i think like i said you know as we go into the future here world war one around all these times where people are doing shady stuff yes one thousand percent but back then man it really seemed like these beings were around when her ancestors were they were just living up in the mountains and cave systems that does make sense 100 percent and uh i was going to elaborate on this too what do you think about these uh dog man do you think that they make structures like the bigfoot uh just it's just differently because i found these trees um recently and uh you know, they're, the scratches are about nine, ten foot off the ground and the barks just ripped off and there's these huge, huge claw marks. Do you think the dog men do that as like a scent marker? And I know that they they will uh, mark trees. They'll, they'll pee on them. And let me tell you, I, I don't know if it's dog men or if it's Bigfoot, but let me tell you, that stuff stinks. 
Yeah, it's described as smelling like fox urine a ton, man, which or fox piss. And yeah, of course, man. I mean, look at I have a pet squirrel and some of the squirrels she plays with outside. I mean, she has a home that we built for her, but the other squirrels make their own homes and nests and they're making tunnel entrances to trees, etc. Yes, I'm thousand percent. And I can send you a picture later. You'll just have to remind me of a woman recently that found a structure. All these trees are bent down. But yet, as you look into the picture, there's a massive hole in the ground, a den that leads super deep down into the ground. So, yes, I believe that dogmen are doing that. They're obviously kind of like a trapdoor spider, man. They are protecting that entrance. Yet if something gets close enough to that den or that sinkhole or whatever, kind of like in the descent, man, they can just grab you and boom, you're gone. Obviously, if trapdoor spiders and other type of arachnids and animals do something very similar like that. Same thing, trapdoor type concept. Right, absolutely. Now, and it's, that's Nate's question. I don't know if you're going to have an answer for it or not. But do you think that the dog man, um, you know, have have their young in the, the spring, this type of ten, time of year, you know? Actually, funny you said that. We have a bunch of charts we've been working on. During the seasons in this chart, and I'll put it up in the video, the majority of them are definitely in the summer type springtime. But, I mean, any animal is going to be like that. I mean, I assume you have a few animals that might try to raise their young in the winter, but that doesn't really seem like a very good survival technique. Right. You're, yeah, you're absolutely right about that. But, you know, I, I didn't know how how the dog man actually really operated. You know, I'm, I'm more onto the Bigfoot side. The dog man just kind of they kind of show up uninvited but uh you know i just i didn't wonder if you know they have them now or if they had them later on in the year you know or if they i mean i'm sure they utilize caves right oh yes any sort of animal does and recently in uh, saudi arabia they found a cave system where there were hundreds and hundreds and even like thousands of animal bones mixed in with human bones where these hyenas were bringing their prey back to these cave systems and basically living and feeding inside of them. Oh, yeah, that, that does make sense. Just think of the cave systems. Obviously, we found insects in there that haven't been documented yet and things along those lines. It is a proven fact that we know more about outer space than we really do about the cave systems and the oceans. I'm pretty sure when people are going missing, no one's really searching those cave systems in those areas either. So. Right, yeah, and another thing about the you know, missing persons and stuff like that, uh, I think I need to. I was going to look into this, but I was going to see if I could find a way to look at electromagnetic field spikes and you know correlate that into a day's like where dog mans have been sighted and then correlate that into the days that you know people went missing. Yes, no, I mean that 100% makes sense. And to touch base on what you had previously mentioned. Animals are super sensitive to changes in their environment, meaning whales that are potentially beaching themselves. A lot of biologists and scientists believe that what's occurring is sonar and all these other noises like underwater construction is just so loud to them because they're super sensitive to that type of stuff anyhow. And when they look at the flesh of the whales after they have been beached, it literally looks like massive bruises all over it, like something was just beating the crap out of it because those sonar sounds are literally like scrambling their brains. Right, and uh, you know, and, and I, I'm sure that the Bigfoot and the Dogman and all that stuff, they they can probably see in a different s- spectrum than what we can, and I'm sure that's probably why none of them, nobody will ever get a clear trail camera picture of them because they're just so they're so intelligent, and they they know they can smell the cameras and all this stuff, and I really I think that they can see on another spectrum that, that we can, and they can hear and things that we can't even. Any animal, yeah, of course. Look at a wolf, for example. A wolf, you know, knows you're in the area long before you do. Right, yeah, deer, deer are the same way. Any of them, yes, yes. Any animal that is adaptable to surviving out in the forest is going to be aware of that. I mean, let's be real. Humans, we sound, for the most part, like a herd of hippopotamuses going through the forest. So we're pretty easily detectable in comparison to, say, a fox or something along the lines of that. So if a squirrel or any sort of potential game animal needs to be aware of something as quiet and stealthy as a fox, let's be real, Some something like the majority of humans just talking and falling over, stepping on branches, you're going to hear that forever, not to mention the smell and the scent. Yeah, exactly. Right, yeah. I mean, I, I like to think I'm pretty stealthy myself since I'm a 
a hunter you know i, I mean i like to think i'm pretty pretty sneaky but you know they these these creatures they're very 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 intelligent you know and they they know as soon as you get into their, your area you know like every time every time i go into my research area it's just it's just a different world you know it, it doesn't feel like the woods normally should feel no, that makes sense. And that kind of falls back to our ancestors in regards of when you got those type of feelings. So that would mean that you are in trouble from a cave bear or something that was going to come and predate on you. Yet now we just as people sometimes we still have those natural instincts, yet it doesn't mean it's always occurring just because we walk into the forest and we've already say like got ourselves amped up a little bit of the thoughts of what's occurring. That's natural, like human behavior, but yet it's still installed into our DNA to be aware of predators, giant snakes, and things that used to feed on us. Well, yeah, 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 definitely, though. But uh, since since I've been looking into Bigfoot and Dogman, you know, I, I know it's I know it's them and, and not natural uh, wildlife. You know, it's things that are unknown that are seeking me out. I don't know if I have a high EMF or what, but these they're, they're just drawn to me for some reason. Everybody's electromagnetic field is different. Yeah, no, that's 100%. I mean, that's why sometimes, I mean, I've noticed like animals, stray cats and just animals in general, I'm able to befriend pretty easy in comparison to some other people. Because like you said, they can pick up on those type of vibes. And that's how I was able to get some of the random neighborhood squirrels to come up and sit on my hand. And like I said, stray cats that have pretty much lived outside their whole lives. But, you know, I'm able to pet them and just basically interact with them, etc. Uh, they definitely, animals can tell and sense you know if you're if you're good or not i i don't know if the dog man can like sense fear i mean i'm sure they can i mean animals animals anyway can sense it you know whenever i seen my first one it, it had the fear of god in me that was for sure they can definitely sense that i can count on all my hands and my toes how many cases i have of dog men just smiling at people and basically almost getting some straight up enjoyment off of the fear. One woman driving that thing stuck its face up into the side of her car as it was running, pulled its teeth back and kind of did like that hyena type like grin. So letting her know, yeah, and I can get you at any point in time before it just decided to take off into the forest. Another couple saw it grinning in their window, basically just like, hey, I want to get you at some point in time, etc. Yeah, it's almost like they're toying with you in a sense, you know, just to get a rise out of it. That's what killer whales do. Dolphins are related to killer whales, man. I mean, killer whales are super smart, yet they sit there and play with them as if they're their food, but they're sitting there slapping it around with their tail and all that, just making a game out of it. Yeah, it's pretty pretty wild stuff. Yeah, no, definitely make sure to keep me posted on all that and send over any new images you get so that we can edit them and make sure to get them up on the website anytime that you would like to in the future collaborate or if there's any ways that I can potentially help you out and gear you in the right direction. That's awesome. And make sure to keep on keeping myself as well as my audience updated onto your theories and your basically concepts as to how those two entities are potentially working together and as a team and not necessarily as solo entities. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I'm, I'm definitely, I'm close to figuring out something. I mean, it, it's, it's just, I can feel, it. I feel like I'm getting close to something. What? I don't know. Uh, but I have noticed, I will say this, I have noticed that the dog man, they, they tend to stick around closer to cemeteries. Why? I don't know. But, you know, the Bigfoot, they're, they're around, they are close to the cemetery, but the dog man, they're, they're, they they stay around cemeteries i i just i can't figure out why i don't know uh, i'm sure that the energy there is greater uh to be for certain i, I can't say uh but I'm, you know I'm who's glad. really good with that actually my friend is ryan tremblay so uh my most recent episode of midnight like anthropy he dives into that and we talk about some of the potential sightings of dogmen around cemeteries and he actually has a great philosophy as to what that entity is and that it's not directly a dog man but it's more or less a manifestation of what's occurring in the area or what that individual is doing well i'll have to definitely message ryan and ask him about that because whenever i had my dog man encounter i went back and i looked at the maps of where my like my encounter happened on apple maps and it showed that there was two old cemeteries up there and i there wasn't no gravestones or nothing but it shows that there's two cemeteries up there and i literally had my dog man encounter right in between the both of them no that's super super interesting as well and i kind of have a potential little theory on that i haven't really dove too much into it but also cemeteries are usually type of areas that are 
I don't know, not taboo, but not really highly ventured into. So, I mean, if a dog man wanted to be closer to the local public to kind of scope out and figure out what was going on, they'd be able to make their ways through cemeteries for the most part without being detected by anyone. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, I mean, it makes sense, you know, and it's uh, like I said, this was way up in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. I mean, they, it's untelling how old this cemetery is. Like I said, there ain't no gravestones or nothing. Yep. Yeah, no, we have a couple of those. Actually, my grandfather used to have a ton of property and I was in the middle of the forest just messing around and we came across. Yeah, it was it was hard to read the dates on it. It was definitely a very old, unkept cemetery. So no, those are definitely around. And I know in the LBL, there's a ton of them and all across the country, just when we came in and basically forced indigenous cultures into the little areas that we now claim are spots for them. There was just a ton of graveyards also in general from all that and we just basically colonized over top of that so no it's definitely pretty interesting yeah it definitely, it definitely is it makes you scratch your head and think i mean i want to encourage anybody you know if you're you know, ever listening to this uh just keep your mind open you know and ask yourself questions you know um i mean if you have any questions you can contact me you can contact kenny he's a great guy and uh, i'm very thankful to be associated with him and i consider him a very good friend you know and he's a great guy thank you very much for those kind words i feel the same right back to you my friend and if i ever do have people contact me and i think something's more sasquatch based i'll definitely gear them in your direction and i would love to hear in the future get you back on midnight lycanthropy and basically dive back into if you have any newer theories or new evidence that you've been able to collect and we will be able to dive back into the dogman topic yeah, definitely, definitely. Like I said, the Bigfoot's more to my department. I'm still, I'm still learning about the dog, man, and you're, you're helping me piece by piece, you know. And I, I can't thank you enough for it. No, I appreciate you. That's what we try to do, and that's basically what my goal is: is to try to answer as many questions for individuals with our website, and also with my own posts in my Facebook group, without having to directly sit down with someone, even though I'm always willing to, but if I'm able to answer people's questions just from posts and data, then that means I'm successful in regards as to what I'm trying to do. I totally, totally appreciate that. And yeah, we got all your stuff up on the North American Dogman website. Send me over the other image tonight and I'll work on that. And also send me a picture of yourself that you would like in the video as I introduce you and I'll get your logo on it as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll get that sent over to you and uh, we will get it worked out, my friend. And uh, like I said, thank you again, brother. Thank you for everyone who once again stopped by the Fox stand for this episode of Midnight Lycanthropy airing on Star Fox Radio. If you do enjoy my content, please like, subscribe, and share it. Feed the algorithm the facts. Until next time, stay safe out there, be good people, and realize there are things our minds cannot comprehend. Ha 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 ha.